Welcome to Men, Sex, and Tantra. Discover where your parents, porn, and religion never taught you about being a man and having extraordinary sex. Get ready to have your mind blown and your world rocked. Hey everybody, Tanya and Michael Mike. here. Woohoo! And uh, you know, I'm Tanya with with the hair. And I'm Michael <laughs> without the hair. Just in case you can't tell which one of us is masculine enough. <laughs> I'm and I really suggest now. if you're just hearing this <laughs> on on a podcast that you do check us out on video every once in a while. M- Michael is uh, quite funny with his drama, <laughs> his hand gestures and drama. So. Today, today, what are we talking about? Am I masculine enough? Oh my God. I know that I am. I'm yeah, not worried about You definitely that. are, Tanya. There's no question. <laughs> Me, on the other hand, <clears throat> I don't know. Sometimes I have questions. All right. Well, so what the heck does it even mean? Um, well, I think it means do you chop wood every day? Do you have a Ford F-350? Do you you not know how to cook anything but a steak? Grill master. Yeah. Um, Do you wear many leather items? Uh, You know, these sorts of things. Oh, I'm good with that one. Okay, excellent. (laughs) So when this checklist of things has been met and say there's, you know, we could probably come up with a list of 20 of them. With your bare hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill bears with your bare hands and stuff like that. And and if you have at least 15 out of 20, then you are masculine enough. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so it's that easy. No, I I, I think that we've we've simplified it quite a bit. Um, I'd like to distinguish between um, masculinity as the cultural kind of construct, which is what I'm what I've been speaking to and masculinity as an energy. Um. And I'm sh- I'm sure you're kind of familiar with the difference between these. You want to take a stab at it? Yeah, sure. This is always such an exciting thing topic for me. Um, <laughs> so masculinity, femininity, it's a big deal right now. You've got a ton of people jumping in their polarity coaches, jumping in left and right to let us lead us all into this beautiful experience of how to be more masculine or feminine. And to me, masculinity is really, I mean, you had said this earlier, you know, Michael, if, you, if you're, you know, can you look in your pants and you've got a penis, you can assume you're masculine at some point. But even that's changing a little bit now with certain things. So describing masculinity to me is more of a way of um, pushing into so if I were to say feminine and masculinity, I would say masculinity is more a stepping into and femininity is more of an allowing. Yes. Yeah, um, that's that's one way to define it. Uh, definitely. If we can, we can think of the, you know, the the cock and the pussy as metaphors exactly. for the for the energy. Right. We have one it's soft, wet, receptive, cavernous, um, you know, full of possibility or actually full of no possibility, full of emptiness. Right. right? And then we have the, you know, the phallus, the lingam, the cock, the dick. Right. That's this the thrusting outwards with yeah. the, um, the with the <laughs> right. force of its right. truth and perception. Wow. Okay then. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, see, right. So even when you, even when one speaks, one can speak yeah. in a masculine way versus a feminine way. When you speak in a feminine way, it's soft, it's inviting, right? It's full of subtlety and 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 nuance. And when you speak in a masculine manner, it's forceful, it's direct, it has a quality to it that inspires solidity and groundedness. Right. You're, when you when you feel the energy of the masculine, you feel that sense of stability. When you feel the energy of the feminine, you feel this energy of oh, bliss, delight, like, you know, kind of like, you know, possibility. Um, yeah. But nothing concrete. Ah, I always feel like there's, yeah, leaning in, mm-hmm. and leaning out. You know, when I'm trying to explain this to people, because. I, a lot of this, like this idea that you femininity or masculinity or masculinity isn't, doesn't have a receptive soft experience to it either to me is limiting because I think we are best when we dance through both. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, and then there's this, to get to the question. Yeah. What is um, the question is, am I masculine, am I masculine enough? enough? So first of all, I think it's, it's important to delineate who asks these questions, why they ask these questions, and what are they hoping to gain from the answer? Mm. Uh, so first of all, I think that the, the, the number one category of people that tend to ask this question are men who are worried that they are too feminine. Not masculine enough. Yes. Okay. Um, and... Uh, typically that arises as a, given a vacuum, no human being is going to be questioning this, right? However, there's usually an impetus that causes a man to question this. Right. Either he's dumped because, you know, the, the woman is like, you're not man enough, or I need this, or I need that, and you're not this or that, right? Yep. Uh, or they see somebody talking about, uh, yeah, you know, how David. they love they masculine read David men Dida. they read david Dida or went to a Nina yes. contra retreat ah! <laughs> and they got this idea of what masculinity is supposed to be and they're wondering they've got a you know they've got their their ruler and they're seeing if they measure up to that standard yeah um so uh the second category of people who ask that question would actually not be that question it would be um you know, is the man that I'm dating masculine enough for me? <laughs> I think you'd think that would be a pretty easy question to answer. Yeah. Um, well. Yeah, but how would you answer it? Um, that we kind of like a yeah or no. If I'm dating him, he's probably yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, is he leading enough? Is that? Oh what? gosh, I don't know. That's a whole separate. Conversation. Yeah. Right. <laughs> is he masculine enough? I would imagine that. If I'm attracted to him and I've had sex with him and uh, I'm in dating him, yeah, he's masculine enough. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, the, the, the first answer to that question that I would give to a man who asked it, am I masculine enough? Um, I would say, I would, I would ask him, well, what makes you ask that question? And they would usually, you know, give me one of those reasons that I cited earlier. And I would just ask him do you feel that you're masculine enough? All right. And uh, because ultimately, right, it doesn't matter how other people perceive you. It's, it's how you feel internally, right? If you feel that you're good with yourself, fucking own it. Yeah. Right. Owning yourself is the, is, is the number one, like most attractive quality that you can really ever have as a person, right? That's confidence. 100%. Um, and simply by deciding that you're okay with how you are, you're immediately going to be more masculine. Ownership. Yes. Ownership of self equals masculinity. Um, I would say sometimes, um, sometimes it, it is, it is the, the precondition for the, uh, for the living into the world in a confident way which allows for masculinity as an expression, but it allows for anything as an expression, right? You can own yourself and be totally flowy and feminine. And that's cool too. Yeah, absolutely. My, the most masculine man I ever dated was a Navy SEAL guy. You know, there's the epitome of masculinity, right? Navy SEAL dude that, you know, could kill things with his hands and do mm -hmm. whatever he was. And uh, one of his favorite things to do was to, um, express himself in poetry and express himself in music and express himself. One day he, he came out and he was wearing my leopard skin skirt and he goes, awesome. I love this. <laughs> and, and I was like, dude, you look awesome in it. That is awesome. So was he masculine enough? I mean, like, you know, he was comfortable with himself. 100%. Exactly. And, and, you know, I, I would say that, uh, I, to draw that distinction that we made earlier between, uh, you know, kind of culturally uh, defined femininity versus actual femininity, a man can play with the cultural def definitions of femininity and be masculine while doing it, which is yeah. really confusing, right? So right. for some people, so a man can go out there wearing pink, but his energy can speak volumes about his like internal confidence and solidity. So in some ways, being able to play with those uh, hallmarks of femininity as a man makes you ironically more masculine. Yeah, because you're yeah, because of that confidence. Yeah, and exactly. because of that feeling. Absolutely. I personally love uh, masculine 
that look like masculine men yet can play in the feminine realm because I don't want to just be one thing because as you said, I tend to be quite masculine oriented except when I'm in relationship where I blush and giggle which blows people's mind because that is not the way people think I am. So I like that partnership that flows back and forth. Sometimes we're leaning in, sometimes we're leaning out and playing with those realms, but it's all about confidence because if you're scared or concerned that if you come out in pink or if you all of a sudden like this thing, a chick flick, you cried at a chick flick and all of a sudden that means you're not a man anymore, that's not attractive. Yeah. Now you're concerned about that. The what a lot of people define as as masculinity of like the not crying, the not being particularly emotional, those sorts of things. Right. Um, I have a tendency to think that has very little, if not nothing to do uh, with masculinity. Uh, that strikes me simply as conditioning. 100%. Um, so, you know, it, it is true that m like male and female brains function differently. And the, Im the way that men and women process emotions is often very different, but the, the, st the, the strength and power of those emotions um, are no different. They're just the yeah. way they're expressed. Yeah. yeah. We're all emotional beings. Absolutely. And if we can jump in and own all of our emotional being -ness, then we're just more of ourselves which yeah. is a good thing, being more of ourselves. So, you know, earlier today I talked to you about like, I was looking for a cowboy with a man bun. Now you get it. <laughs> I want that rugged masculine exterior or active, you know, guy that does that, but I want him to be able to cross those lines and be totally comfortable in that other realm. So, okay. Way, way easier to find queer men with mullets. <laughs> That exists. Yeah. It's a whole thing. I just moved yeah. to the South, man. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. There's like these dudes all like tatted up. They're like, they're, they're queer. They got a mullet, like, you know, they're real and they're really expressive, which is yep. strange. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> and you know, the thing about masculinity, that's interesting also, just to say I've lived all over the world. Masculinity looks different in different cultures. Yeah. Um, I tell, you know, uh, I had this argument with um, Jonathan Hudson once. Uh, uh, I don't know if you know him, but anyway, uh, we were talking about what is the most masculine fragrance? And oh. he says it's sandalwood. I said it was rose. And, you know, if you go to the Middle East, uh, rose is a very masculine fragrance. Yep. Right? Um, but here here in the United States, we, we think of it as a girly thing. Um, which well, colors too right in yeah. different in different cultures different colors uh so colors the way uh people act the way men act it it's different all all around the world and so i think that which we started with was that if you feel masculine enough whatever that means to you then you are mm -hmm. right it's like not a it's not something for somebody else to tell you what that looks like and if your girl's telling you you're not masculine enough get a new girl absolutely right because you're just not her person yeah exactly she's wanting something other than what you are which is <laughs> never never a good thing to have in a relationship <laughs> what come on <laughs> that's so like what now that doesn't mean you can't play with the whole dance of leaning in and leaning out and trying that some more because you know, I love my masculinity. I love my badass self. And I wouldn't love it so much if I was in competition with my man all the time. Oh, yeah. No. And that that's in me. That's on me. And so playing that dance is super great. So if we're going to leave somebody with a tip, your tip is? Just be you. Uh, it's, don't worry about whether you're masculine enough or feminine enough. Um, you don't need to change yourself. Uh, to make anybody else happy. But by the same token, I highly recommend playing with different energies. So if you want to play, if you're an indecisive person, right, as a man who asked this question might be, what if you just decided that you were going to make every single decision and just stick with it and be like, boom, and play with that for a day 
and see how that feels, right? I'm going to become more decisive. That can be a fun experiment, but don't do it from a place of needing to be different than you are. Absolutely. I concur as a woman who loves masculine men, you would look at some of the men that I've been with and wonder, are they actually masculine? And to me, it's all that energetic dance of the ability to lead, lean in and lean out, to push in or to hold back, to do that whole thing. And it's not really a look per se, it's a dance. And I think we're all fluid and I think the more fluid you can be, the more texture and excitement in life. Yeah. Be you, be you, be you. Don't, don't, changing around for pe- changing your essence for people, yeah, is a tough, tough road for everybody. All right, that's it for today. We'll see you again with some more great stuff. Remember, you can reach uh, any of us, either of us, both of us, just by going down and clicking some links where we are in the comments, and we welcome hearing from you. See you next time.